Hey guys, Andy Robertson here with CQE Academy and now Greenbelt Academy. And I'm super excited for today's video. I've gotten this question a lot. Andy, should I should I take the CQ exam or the Greenbelt exam? And so today I wanted to answer that question in this short video and help you guys on your growth journey to either become a CQE or a Greenbelt or perhaps both. All right, let's head over to the computer and get started. All right, let's jump into it today. Like I mentioned, I want to share the tips and the details around this idea of, you know, which exam should you focus on? Should you should you take the CQ exam or the Greenbelt exam? And it's not a simple answer, right? And so I wanted to put together this real quick video to walk you through my thought process on how I would choose or how I would do it if I was a, a new in my career. So today, here's what we're gonna cover. The first thing we're gonna cover is specific details for each exam. There, there are different exams, they have different prerequisites and requirements, and I wanna walk you through those because I think they'll factor into your decision-making process, so I wanna make sure you understand the similarities and the details around those those prerequisites. And then the other thing I think it's really important to top, talk about are the common topics between the exams. I think this is a point of confusion for a lot of people because they notice how similar the exams are. But when you dive deep into each body of knowledge, you find out that while they're similar, they're also quite different. So I want to do that. I want to start with which topics are common, and then I want to dive deep into the body of knowledge specifically and explain kind of the differences. Now, not only do both bodies of knowledge share topics in common, they also have some unique topics. And I think this is important to talk about because if you're choosing between one or the other, you want to make sure that those unique topics benefit you in your future career and what you want to do in your career. And then lastly is my final recommendation. I'm going to give you all this information and then at the end of the day tell you what I think I would do if I was young in my career and how I would approach it. Okay, let's start off with those exam details. So I think there's some really important things to consider up front when choosing between the CQ exam and the Greenbelt exam. So there's there's six different things here. The first is how much experience is required. So this column here represents the CQ exam and this column here represents Greenbelt. You'll notice there's a difference in how much experience is required. The CQ exam requires eight years of experience. The Greenbelt exam only requires three years. Now, of course, the CQ exam, you can waive some years of experience based on education, and I have a whole nother video on that. But just know that the Greenbelt exam to sit for it requires less experience than the CQ exam. The other thing that's different are the number of questions on the exam. Now, the reason I point this out is because the CQ exam has 160 questions and the Greenbelt exam only has 100 questions. And what I'm trying to communicate here is that the Greenbelt exam is likely an easier exam to experience and it's less stressful than the CQ exam. Now, that's also reflected, the size or the scope of the exam is also reflected in the exam time. For the CQ exam, you get five hours. For the Greenbelt exam, you get four hours, right? And that's because there's less questions. Now, the reason, and again, the reason I show you both these metrics is because if you calculate the time per question, right, if you take the total time divided by the total number of questions, what you'll find is, is that the Greenbelt exam gives you more time per question. Now, that seems like a, an insignificant fact, but it's really not. Time management on exam day is absolutely critical. And so the, the, what the point I'm trying to make here is that the Greenbelt exam is slightly easier because you get more time per question. Now, the other thing to consider when choosing between these two is recertification. The CQ exam, you have to recertify every three years. And again, I have a whole nother video on that. You can either retake the exam or you can collect a certain number of recertification units. Again, if you're interested in that, I'll link to it below, but it does require recertification. Once you pass the Greenbelt exam, you're certified for life. There's no recertification process. And again, I think that's a really important thing to consider when choosing between the two. The last thing to think about is the, the scope or the depth or the breadth of the exam. Now, and, and this is where we talk about the number of chapters. In the CQE body of knowledge, there are 43 unique chapters that cover all seven pillars in the body of knowledge. The Greenbelt exam is smaller and only contains 24 chapters. Now, this is where we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about what those chapters are, which topics are included in each, and essentially how well you have to know each topic. Now, the way I like to think about these two bodies of knowledge is by using a Venn diagram. So, for example, this circle represents the CQE body of knowledge and all of the information you need to know to be successful and pass that exam. Here's the Greenbelt exam. 
And, and of course, it's a Venn diagram because there's a lot of overlap. That's a really important concept. These two exams share a lot of topics that are in common with each other. And that's what I've shaded here in gray, right? You'll notice here, so if I back out, this green circle is the green belt body of knowledge. And these two bodies of knowledge, right, the topics you need to know on exam day are very similar. For example, in statistics, it's probability and process capability and SPC and linear regression and DOE and hypothesis testing. They share a lot of similar topics as it relates to statistics. Same for continuous improvement. Lean, Six Sigma, the seven QC tools, Waste, 5S, the seven management planning tools, the CAPA process. All of those topics are included in both exams. And then there's other topics as well. Gauge r, r facilitation, control plans, FMEA, design for Six Sigma. There's a lot of common topics between both exams. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because a lot of people, they, they see this overlap and they think, well, well, hey, if I'm, if I'm going to go for the green belt, I might as well just sit for the CQ exam. Now, here's where I want to go even deeper into the body of knowledge and explain that while these two bodies of knowledge are similar, you have to be careful because the CQ exam is harder. So let me show you what that means. Now, both of these bodies of knowledge, the green belt and the CQE, are based on something called Bloom's Taxonomy of Learning. And essentially, this is a hierarchy, a pyramid of how well or how deep you have to understand a topic to be successful or to pass the exam. So let me give you an example about, let's say, probability distributions. So for the CQE exam, right, probability distributions includes things like the normal distribution, the student T distribution, the F distribution, the binomial, the Poisson distribution. The Greenbelt exam has all of those same distributions, normal distribution, binomial, Poisson, chi-squared, student T, F distribution. But look at the Bloom's taxonomy. So here, to be successful on the Greenbelt exam, you only have to understand these statistical distributions. But on the CQE exam, you have to be able to analyze a situation or a scenario and, and essentially be able to perform more difficult calculations relative to those probability distributions. So the point I'm trying to make here is that even though a lot of the, the concepts are similar in terms of the body of knowledge, the CQE exam is harder because you have to understand those topics on a deeper, deeper level. Here's another example for hypothesis testing. So you'll notice here in the CQE exam, the uh, Bloom's taxonomy here, that the level of cognition for hypothesis testing is evaluate, right? We're, we're almost near the top. If you look at the Greenbelt exam, it's apply and it's analyze. And you'll also notice that, you know, within the actual words and the descriptions of hypothesis testing, it's required that you understand more concepts within hypothesis testing. So again, even though the, the concepts sound similar and the topics seem like they're the same, they're really not. The CQ exam is uh, fundamentally more difficult. The, another example I'll give you here is DOE. Again, here in DOE, right, if you look at the Greenbelt exam, it's understand. You can see it here and apply, right? But then when you look at the CQ exam, you're having to do a lot of analysis and, and you have to have a fundamentally a deeper understanding of these topics. The same is true in continuous improvement. A lot of the lean topics in Greenbelt are things like understand, apply, you know, maybe a little bit of analyze. If you come here to the CQ exam, though, the level of cognition, right, your level of understanding has to be at this evaluate level. So again, the questions are more difficult surrounding those topics. And this is the general conclusion. The CQE exam requires a deeper understanding of many of these common topics. So when you see this Venn diagram and you see this overlap, I don't want you to get confused and think, well, hey, just because I passed the Greenbelt exam, you know, I'm going to be fine on the CQ exam. It doesn't work that way. You do have to learn those topics uh, more deeply. Now, I wanted to come back to this Venn diagram and talk about unique topics associated with each exam. So, for example, here's that Venn diagram. This little sliver here in green, right, this little sliver here in green, which I just shaded into like this yellowish color, are topics unique to the Greenbelt exam. The big one, honestly, being project management. I, I do think the, the Greenbelt body of knowledge does a good job in going deep around project management, identifying projects, selecting them, managing projects, managing risk. I, I love that the Greenbelt body of knowledge includes a lot of project management because fundamentally to make change happen, you often have to manage a project. So I like that they go really deep here into the project management, and that is something unique to the Greenbelt exam. Now, if you think about the CQE exam, there's a lot of unique topics here that are on the CQE exam that are not on the Greenbelt exam. Risk management, which is huge. The quality system, acceptance sampling, metrology and calibration, supplier quality, reliability engineering. There are a lot of topics that are unique to the CQE exam 
that are not covered in Greenbelt. And the reason I show you this is because I want you to think personally about your situation and your future and the job you want. If your future role and the role you're targeting requires you to understand supplier quality and acceptance sampling and risk management and reliability, well, then the CQ exam is probably a better bet for you. But if those, if these topics here really don't interest you or they're not, you know, how you want to spend your time in the future, then perhaps the green belt exam is, is the appropriate certification for you. Now, having said all this and shared all this information, I want to give you my final recommendation. Here's what I would do if I was a, if I was a young engineer in my career and I wanted to really grow, I would start with green belt, start with the green belt exam. And here's why there's fewer topics on the exam. It's an easier exam to get through. You, you essentially learn a lot. You learn a lot about how to study and how to prepare and how to take tests when you take the green belt exam and there's fewer topics, meaning that it's easier. It also requires less experience, meaning that if you're younger in your career and you haven't hit that, that eight year mark, you can sit for the green belt exam first. You also get more time on the exam. There's less stress. There's less pressure because you get more time per question and the questions are not as difficult. Remember that goes back to the cognition level. You ha you do have to understand hypothesis testing, but not to the same depth that you would on the CQ exam. And so, so essentially you get easier questions and more time to solve easier questions. The other thing I put here is that the Greenbelt exam tends to be more applicable in more industries and more roles. Think back to what I said about the CQ exam and the unique topics reliability engineering, acceptance sampling, risk management, the quality system. Those topics are really important if you are in quality or if you are in quality engineering. But if you're not, if you're just a uh, manufacturing engineer or product engineer or some other type of engineer, the green belt certification is, is probably more applicable to you and the role you're in. Now, the, the next recommendation I would make is take the CQ exam second. Continue learning, continue growing, continue building on your experience. Start with green belt. Get that foundational knowledge of a lot of those difficult statistical topics that hold a lot of people back on the CQ exam and then and then pass that exam and, and move on to the CQ exam. Because essentially, you, you to, in my opinion, life is a growth journey. You should be continuously learning and continuously growing. And this is a great way to structure it. Start with Greenbelt, go to CQE, and that's a that's a to me a great first two steps in any sort of career growth. Now, if you're looking to if you're looking to go on any journey, whether it's Greenbelt or CQE, I've got a ton of resources for you. If you want to go on the Greenbelt journey, head over to greenbeltacademy.com. If you want to go on that CQE journey, right, go to cqeacademy.com. I've got a ton of free resources, practice exams, equation guides, tips, study plans, free courses content, video content, all sorts of stuff to help you prepare for either exam. Go check that out. I would love to work with you and help you grow and learn and pass either of these certification exams. By the way, if you like this video, do me a favor, hit that uh, thumbs up button so that other people just like you can find the same content. And if you want to go on this journey to become a CQE, I've got, I now have two YouTube channels. I've got a YouTube channel at CQE Academy and a YouTube channel at Greenbelt Academy. Subscribe to both because again, the, the content between the two is similar. So as I post content for Greenbelt Academy, you can learn and that, that can help you on your CQE journey and vice versa. So definitely subscribe to both because I think, I think you're going to find all the content incredibly valuable for both those journeys. And I'm super excited to help you learn and grow. And that's it for me. Have a good one. Bye.